Hello again, poker players. This is Steve Subrady, and I have a tournament hand for you today. This time, it's a $200 bounty event at the South Point Casino in Las Vegas. This event had 30,000 uh, starting chips and 20-minute levels. Um, we are at in level 12, which is just past the late entry period. The key question in this hand is how should we play Jack-10 suited with a short stack? Let's get started. We are just past the late entry period, but not close to the bubble. I have only 15 big blinds to start this hand. The action folds around to the low jack, who bets 5,000 chips, which is two and a half big blinds. The high jack calls, cutoff folds, and it's now us and the button with 15 big blinds. What should we do here? We are in the transition zone where we will often flat rather than jam. Our holy grail strategy is summarized in this panel. The CPI of our Jack-10 suited is 48 points, that's 22 points for the Jack, 10 points for the 10, 8 points because it's suited, and another 8 points because it's a connector. The position index of the opener is 40 points from the low Jack seat, so our hand is not quite strong enough to 3-bet here. We would need 49 points um, as our baseline strategy. But a gem would have significant chip utility, since neither villain would be uh, very happy to get crippled by calling my jam and losing. Nevertheless, I would normally just flat here since I will be in position post-flop and might be able to outplay the weak competition. Let's look at what the GTO Wizard Solver says about this situation. With a 14 stack solution, GTO Wizard has us jamming 54% of the time and folding 36% of the time. The wizard is never flatting like I did. However, the EVs for each decision are very close. Calling is still the worst option against GTO villains, but this may not be the case in a real game. So I called the 5,000 chip bet. The blinds both fold. And the flop is 10, 8, 7 with two clubs. The original opener checks. The hijack bets 6,000 chips into a 2,000 chip pot, fairly small bet, and now the action is on us. What should we do? We have flopped top pair, a flush draw, and a gutter. This is an excellent flop, but my top pair is a bit vulnerable to an overcard on the turn. With a larger stack, I might just flat or three bet small, but with my remaining stack of just 12 big blinds, I think a jam is in order. So I jam, low jack folds, and the high jack calls with five, six offsuit. So he has an open ender. He probably called thinking he had eight outs twice to hit his straight. So he was calling 19,000 chips to win a 70,000 chip pot and he needed only 27% equity. With eight outs twice, he would have 32% equity using the rule of twos. So this seems like a good call, but he is not considering the impact of ICM on the equities. I suspect that this was a marginal ICM call at best, but he didn't actually have eight outs since his club outs would give me a flush and his uh, nine outs would give me a better straight. The turn is a blank, the river is a four, giving him the straight and sending me to the rail. It's broken lonely for me. There are two important lessons we can learn from today's hand. First, we will often have a pre-flop decision that GTO solvers show as a clear preference, even though it's a mixed strategy. Against real opponents, we have to make an exploitive decision though. Sometimes there just isn't a clear right or wrong answer. Second, sometimes we make a good decision and it just doesn't work out. That was the end of me this time, but there's always another tournament to play. I hope you enjoyed the hand. Until next time.